What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Bush coming at you solo today with a combine preview. What you need to watch for in the 2022 NFL Combine. As I'm recording this right now, it is Tuesday, March 1st. The Combine is officially starting. We're going to start getting some, you know, fast and furious information about, you know, veterans and rookies and, you know, trades and all this kind of stuff is going to be coming in the next couple of days. So I'm basically in this video, I'm going to be outlining everything that matters for the 2022 combine, both from a macro level and by position of what things you should be paying attention to for running backs, for example, in general, and also outlining what matters for specific prospects based on what I know about those players who has size concerns, who has, you know, speed concerns, agility concerns, whatever the case is, I will be covering that in today's video, all four fantasy relevant positions. We will be live streaming at some point on Thursday and Friday. On Thursday, quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends will be testing. And then on Friday, running backs and offensive linemen will be testing. We will be live streaming sometime between 4 and 11 is when that's actually on TV. So we'll be probably live streaming 6, 7 o'clock Eastern time uh, during that point so we can you know talk about live react to some of this stuff. So if you enjoy this video, as always, hit the like button, comment any of your thoughts down below, and subscribe to the channel if you are new. In the descriptions, there's a link to our Patreon. Just had a couple of people sign up in the last few days. Appreciate those of you that support us over there. Patreon.com forward slash fantasy stock exchange for a tons of uh, exclusive content that you won't find here. Now let's hit the intro. So we're going to start with the running back position. And basically what I'm going to talk about is what you should be looking for, what matters for the running back position, what's been predictive, um, you know, based on fantasy production. So about a year ago, I wrote an article series uh, basically titled the anatomy of a difference making blank quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. I wrote it on all four positions uh, for the fantasy scouts. And I will link that in the description because it is still currently on their website. If you want to go back and look at that article. Uh, in that series, I wanted to test um, common indicators of success for each position based on what we know. And, uh, you know, this is not groundbreaking analysis that I was doing. I was basically just testing the, the already known uh, common indicators of success for these positions and just seeing how accurate they actually were on running backs that had actually finished as RB1s from 2015 to 2020. And then I added this year's running backs to it as well. For running backs, the common indicators and the most predictive indicators were running backs above the weight of 205 pounds, weight adjusted speed score above 95.0, which is available on player profiler and draft capital and tar and college target share. Basically, those were the ones that I was testing. I will be doing this again for this year's class. I might even add a few metrics that I might test, but I have to wait a few weeks until we have combine numbers and pro day numbers and all that stuff. There are a list of RB ones in points per game from 2015 to 2021 on the screen right now. This is basically what we're chasing with all these running back prospects, the guys that you guys like in the draft, Brees Hall, Isaiah Spiller, Kenneth Walker, anybody that you guys like, this is who we want these guys to turn into guys that can finish as RB ones in fantasy. And the reason I did it with guys that had finished as RB ones and not just like the top, you know, 24 dynasty running backs in ADP is because a lot of those guys are going to bust, right? We're not going to get everything right. So I wanted to test the guys that definitively finished as RB ones. And some of them were repeat finishers as well. So what does this all mean for the 2022 combine? It basically means that we're looking specifically at a few things on a macro level. When you guys are watching the combine on Friday, which is when the running backs are testing, what should you be looking for? What matters? What, you know, doesn't matter. Number one, the running backs need to reach a certain size threshold to be successful. Now, there isn't too big a difference between a 225 pound running back and a 215 pound running back. Like I said, the size threshold was 205 pounds. Most importantly, uh, the commonality among all these RB ones was that they were above the weight of 205 pounds. It's important. It, it matters for the running back position. 92% of all the RB ones in that data set cleared 205 pounds when they weighed in at the combine or at their pro day. The only ones that didn't were Austin Eckler, James White, and Danny Woodhead. And obviously with those guys, they're receiving backs. So if you're small, you better be a very, very good receiver, not just a good receiver. You better be very, very good. And I would um, you know, venture a guess to say that your college target share and all your receiving metrics would need to be off the charts in that case. Also, I don't think Austin Eckler is under 205 pounds now. I think back when he first came out, probably he was, but he's pretty yoked now. He's definitely been hitting the gym in the weight room since then. So obviously size is very important. They need to clear 205 pounds. And again, I will talk about specific prospects that have size concerns in a second, but 
The second trait that we need to be on the lookout for, for the running back position is speed and specifically weight adjusted speed. So you can run a 449 at 199 pounds and you can run a 449 at 220 pounds. And the latter is much more impressive. It's much more predictive. It's much more translatable to success. 86% of the running backs in that data set as RB ones from 2015 to 2021 in points per game cleared 95 plus weight adjusted speed score and weight adjusted speed score is basically just calculated by your weight and the 40 time that you ran someone right on the border of 95, just for reference of the, the weight and speed combination we're talking about was James Robinson. He was just below 95 at uh, running a four, uh, six, four 40 at his pro day at 219 pounds. So that's kind of like the, the, the borderline. If you're talking about a bigger running back, they need to be just a little bit faster than that. If you're curious, 215 pound backs, generally want to be four, six flat or faster backs under two fifteen probably want to be low four fives or faster. And these aren't difficult thresholds to clear. As you guys can probably tell by now, we want to use them more so as boxes to check and disqualifiers because we don't want to necessarily bump a guy up for running a four, three, seven versus, you know, the four, four, five, we were expecting. What we want to do is use them as, you know, he checks that box. He's faster than we need him to be. He's not, you know, NF or he's NFL speed. He's fast for NFL running backs. That's all we really need him to be. If Isaiah Spiller comes out and runs four, six, seven, that's going to be a problem. But if he comes out and runs four, five, eight, four, five, seven, that's not going to be too much of a difference as if he ran four, five, two. That's really all we're looking for. And same goes for a guy like Brees Hall. If, if he runs four, four flat, and Isaiah Spiller runs four five flat. I'm not going to bump Brees Hall in my rankings up because he's faster than Isaiah Spiller. I already knew that. It's something that I saw on tape. It's not a huge deal. They both check the box given their size and we can move on from there. So the third thing and the other thing that's a little bit more, you know, you got to pay close attention to, but the combine can be helpful for indications of draft capital. Pay attention to some of the chatter, uh, the Ian Rappaport's, Tom Pelissero types. They're going to be tweeting out stuff. They're going to be talking about stuff on NFL Network that are going to give insight to the draft capital of these players. And if I'm sure Daniel Jeremiah, when somebody is lining up to run their 40 yard dash, Daniel Jeremiah and company, Rich Eisen and those guys are going to just say things like, um, you know, teams have this guy graded as, you know, a third or fourth round pick. And that's important, right? We need to know that information because draft capital is obviously very, very important to the success of all players, but especially running backs and wide receivers who I'll talk about in a second. So on a player to player level, micro level, who has something to prove on Friday. So, as far as all these prospects, this is what I'm most interested in. So for Kyron Williams and Kenneth Walker, I need to know how big they are because I have size concerns about those players. Kyron Williams as a receiving back can be under 205 pounds because he's a very good receiving back, but don't be too small. Don't be 187 pounds or 190 pounds or something like that. If he's 200 plus, I'm okay with that. Kenneth Walker, however, who is not a receiving back in college, I need him to be 210. I need him to be, you know, over 205 uh, comfortably if possible. So that's the, the concerns I have for those guys. And also on Kenneth Walker, who I just have a lot of concerns about in general. I also want to see how fast he is because his breakaway speed and his ability to take things to the house was his bread and butter in college. It was one of his best traits as a player. And I want to also see how he looks in the receiving drills because he didn't get a lot of receiving work in college. So if he's out there catching passes and dropping passes and you know running terrible routes and stuff, that's going to be something I got to pay attention to. So another guy that I'm curious to see at the combine is Isaiah Spiller. His betting line currently is set at four, five, eight for how fast he is. I think he's faster than that. Personally, I think he's going to be in the low four fives, but it's a good line. I think that's about uh, the correct over under that you're going to have on his speed. Just again, don't be four, six, seven slow. If you're four, six, one at 222 pounds, that's probably fine. But uh, that's probably the line we're talking about there. Uh, how is Brees Hall built? I'm curious about as well. He's listed at six, one, two, fifteen. But if he comes in 6'1", 207 or something like that, I'm going to be a little bit concerned because then you got a bit of a longer running back. He's a little tall. He's a little, you know, not as compact as a guy like Isaiah Spiller. That's something I'm, I'm a little bit worried about with Brees Hall. I think he's going to test very well, though, so I have no concerns um, around that angle of things. Tyler Algier from BYU is currently my RB3 in the class behind Spiller and Hall at 1 and 2. And number one, is he all of 220? How big is he? I want to know how you know thick he is because I I'm, I might even be shocked to see if he's 225, 230 because he looks really yoked up. He looks really big. What is his draft capital uh, buzz like? Also, I want to hear when he's running his drills and stuff. I want to hear what Daniel Jeremiah and Rich Eisen have to say about him. Are they going to say, hey, these you know this is a day three running back? Are they going to say, you know, a lot of teams are rising on this guy? That stuff is important for a guy like Tyler Algier, who currently my biggest question mark is what is his draft capital going to be? Because I don't have a whole lot of questions about him on tape. And the most common question that other people have about Tyler Algier that I don't necessarily have 
is how good are his agilities. Um, he, he proved uh, to me that his elusiveness was good enough in college. It's good enough in the NFL level. But I want to see if he runs, you know, 12th percentile agilities, that's going to, you know, cause him to be bumped down a little bit. But if he's in the 50th percentile, especially given his size, I'm not going to be uh, overly concerned about that. Uh, there, those are my major questions. But again, like I said, size and baseline speed are the most important and most common things for running backs to translate to good fantasy, um, you know, running backs. Good agility drills are nice. Um, burst score, you know, uh, explosiveness and agility score, all that stuff is important. But as a general rule, just tailor it to the size. So if a big back like Tyler Algier runs a 38th percentile three cone, uh, so did Adrian Peterson, so did James Conner, so did other big running backs. They don't need to run, you know, uh, great agilities as compared to a smaller back like Kyron Williams. He needs to be in the 80th, 90th percentile given his size and given what his skill set is going to be at the next level. Now, if he runs in the 30th percentile, that is going to be a big time problem for me. Now onto the wide receiver position. And again, I wrote an article called the anatomy of a difference making wide receiver, which I will link down below. I added a few names to this, to this list because we have more wide receivers that finishes top 12 guys this year with Jamar Chase and Debo Samuel, Deontay Johnson, Mike Williams, and T Higgins, all finishing as top 12 wide receivers in points per game who had not done it previously. I will be doing this exercise again, come late March, early April. I'll do it at that point with the current running back class because, or in wide receiver class, because I did it last year and I just need a little bit more information before I can do it again. So that's that video and you know that stuff will be available to you guys in a couple of weeks. But these are the dudes that finishes wide receiver uh, ones in fantasy. You'll notice that the combine related things tested were weight, height, and forty time, as well as draft capital. Which again, you'll get a ton of information about during this week. We'll get a ton of reports coming out from the Tom Pelissero's Ian Rap reports. You know, on the broadcast with Daniel Jeremiah's. Like I said, the most predictive and biggest takeaway for Thursday, which is when the wide receivers, quarterbacks, and tight ends test is the 40 yard dash. And I don't mean how fast they run. I mean, how slow they run 43 wide receivers finished as uh, wide receiver ones between 2015 and 2021 in points per game, 40 of them ran faster than 4.6. So we don't need these guys to be four, four fast. We don't need them to be, you know, four, three fast. That's the benchmark for being too slow. That's what we're looking for out of these wide receivers. And again, size will play a part in that as well, because, you know, if Traylon Burks runs a four, four, one, at 230 pounds, that's more impressive than Calvin Austin running a 441 at 175 pounds. But either way, only 17 of the 43 wide receivers that have finished as wide receiver ones ran 445 or faster. So it actually doesn't really correlate all that well to being a fantasy producer at the next level. Running fast doesn't really matter. It just don't run too slow. That's what we're looking for out of these wide receivers. Keenan Allen, Jarvis Landry, and Cooper Cup are the only wide receivers in the last seven years to finish as wide receiver ones without having ran faster than 4.6 at their uh, combine and at their you know pro days and stuff. So that is what we're looking for first and foremost out of wide receivers. The second thing is size, which doesn't matter as much as it used to, but it is still important. If possible, it's a box that these prospects can check. While still a plus for wide receivers, 76% of the 43 wide receivers were over six feet tall and over 190 pounds. Now, we have plenty of guys like Deontay Johnson, dynamic betas putting up fantasy success. So some of the small receivers might be over scrutinized relative to what it actually means to their fantasy value. But like I said, pay attention to these wide receivers, pay attention to the news sources, pay attention to buzz and what guys like Daniel Jeremiah say on the broadcast as far as their draft capital is concerned as well. Because if David Bell is lining up for his 40 yard dash and uh, Daniel Jeremiah says most of these, you know, most of the teams have this guy graded as a day three wide receiver, I'm going to move him down, right? Because that's not encouraging. We need this guy to go in the top two rounds. But if, you know, David Bell lines up, and he and he he says something like, uh, you know, a lot of teams are rising on this kid. I could see him definitely being a top 50 pick this year. That's important as well. So that's basically what we're talking about on a player level. Like I said, for the running backs, who has something to prove on Thursday when these guys test? The important thing to remember, and this is the most important thing for the wide receivers, is how these guys win. So what matters for each player will differ depending on their play style, their size, how they win in the college level, and how they're expected to win at the next level. So for a guy like Garrett Wilson who's a route runner who wins with precision, uh, agility, and all that good stuff, he better run good agility drills because that's what he's going to need in his toolbox to win at the next level. But for a guy like Traylon Burks, who wins with speed, with size, with power, he better be big, fast, and strong. 
for a guy like Drake London who wins because he's, um, you know, physical and he's, you know, big and stuff. He better come in at a good size, put up good enough speed, good enough agilities that he can, you know, take that play style to the next level. Now, specifically on Drake London, I don't know if he's going to test because he suffered an ankle injury midway through the season this year. He probably will wait till USC's pro day. If I had to guess, because typically that's what prospects do if there's a question mark about them. Um, but don't let it be slower than four, five, nine, whatever he ends up running, whether it's at the combine or at his pro day, don't be a four, six, 40 or slower, because again, that's what we're looking for at the combine. Just don't be slow. You can be, you know, a four, five, six for Drake London and a four, four, eight for Drake London probably doesn't mean a whole lot of difference, but don't run a four, six, seven, uh, Drake London. That's all I'm asking out of you. Uh, Jamison Williams obviously will not test because he tore his ACL in the national championship, but he was a threat to crack the four twos would have loved to see his agility drills personally, because that was a question for me on his film. Another guy that we have question marks is Jahan Dotson. How big is he? That's the biggest question mark that we have about him because reportedly he left the senior bowl in mobile, Alabama, because he was too small and teams had a lot of question marks about his size and he refused to weigh in. So I don't know what he's doing right now. If he's drinking a bunch of water and eating a bunch of protein, trying to get up to 185 pounds or something like that, but he is going to be uh, interesting in terms of his size. Also curious on guys like Wondell uh, Robinson and Sky Moore because these guys are small receivers. They're going to be 5'7", 5'8", 5'9", 5'10", maybe at most. And how much do they weigh as well? So if Sky Moore comes in at 5'10", 185 pounds, I'm not going to have any concerns. But if he's 5'7", 175, then I'm going to have some concerns. And the same thing goes for a guy like Wondell Robinson as well. And then also another thing that comes out of the combine is that these guys get medically tested as well. So a guy like Justin Ross, who had a severe neck injury that kept him out of his junior season. George Pickens, who tore his ACL a couple months ago. Drake London, who had an ankle injury. Jameson Williams and John Mechie, both Alabama wide receivers, just tore their ACLs in recent months as well. So all those guys are going to have medicals that are coming out as the um, you know combine process goes on. So that'll be interesting to see. And then the last thing that I talked about kind of already is draft capital buzz. So guys like Christian Watson, who are supposedly rising on boards of NFL teams. David Bell, who I have draft capital concerns about. Uh, I'm also interested to see how good of an athlete both of those guys are. But first and foremost, I want to hear where they're expected to get drafted from guys like Daniel Jeremiah, Rich Eisen, and, you know, the NFL teams and stuff. So uh, quickly on quarterbacks and tight ends, just because it's not as important for these positions. And uh, quite frankly, I just don't know a whole lot about the tight end class. So on quarterbacks, the only thing I care about for quarterbacks is draft capital at the combine. I want to hear the buzz on you know, Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett and Matt Corral and Sam Howell on where they're going to go. Yes. It's great. If, you know, Malik Willis runs a four, four and Sam Howell runs a four, six or whatever, that's very, you know, helpful, but the important insight will be what these teams think of these players, because if it comes out, you know, midway through the week that Sam Howell's a day three quarterback on most teams boards, then I'm going to have to move him down because he's currently, and you guys are going to hear this tomorrow. He's currently my highest graded quarterback and Malik Willis, if he's expected to go in the top five by the end of the combine, that's also important as well. So first round draft capital and high draft capital specifically is realistically all we care about for the quarterback position at the combine. I don't really care how they look in their throwing drills. I don't really care how good of athletes they are, except in you know Malik Willis and Sam Howell's case, just because they're rushing quarterbacks. That's really all I care about as far as the combine is concerned for the quarterback position. And specifically with Sam Howell and Matt Corral, I want to know where they're expected to get drafted because I'm almost certain that Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis will be drafted in the first round. I just want to hear it about the other two guys as well. Matt Corral, we already heard word that he's not going to be working out because of an ankle issue, but he will be there. So we'll get his size. And that's, he's the only quarterback of the top QBs that hasn't registered a size, um, you know, measurement because all the other quarterbacks were at the senior bowl, Desmond Ritter, you know, Carson Strong, Sam Howell, Malik Willis, and Kenny Pickett. All these guys were at the senior bowl. So we have official measurements on those guys. We don't have official measurements on Matt Corral, which is what we'll get at the combine. And we'll probably also get some medical information about him as well on his ankle. So at the tight end position, like I said, full disclosure, I know very little about this tight end class. It's typically the position I evaluate last because it's the least important for fantasy. And also I like to let the class develop a little bit, see who the top guys are, see where the draft capital is expected to be, and then dig into just the top guys. And after the draft, dig into anybody else that I didn't dig into pre-draft. The most, uh, the two most predictive metrics though, for tight ends, when you're watching the tight end drills are weight adjusted speed score being above 100, 86% of the tight end ones from uh, 2015 to 2020 had uh, a high weight adjusted speed score. So these bigger tight ends, if they can run fast, that's very important. So if you see a 250 pound tight end running four, six, eight or something, that's very uh, helpful. That's very important as well. And then a size of six foot four, 245 plus is typically what we're looking for out of these tight ends as well. Like 70. 8% 
of tight ends uh, from 2015 to 2020 that finishes tight end ones were also in that range as well. So be on the lookout for those two things at the tight end position, especially for Trey McBride, Jalen Weidermeyer, and Isaiah Likely, who are expected to be the top tight ends off the board in the 2022 NFL draft class. So if you guys enjoyed this video at all, please leave a like, comment any of your thoughts down below, comment what you're most excited for, for the combine, subscribe to the channel if you are new and check out the Patreon. Like I said, if you are interested in dynasty rankings, all the other stuff that we have available there, player cards and grades on all these players will be available in the coming weeks. We have, um, you know, a couple of them available right now. So check that out. If you're interested, patreon.com forward slash fantasy stock exchange. Peace out guys. And I'll talk to you soon.